Okay, now it's time for the strip layout. So now that we've gotten our part ready, we're ready to put that part into the strip layout. Here's the blank configuration and the finished part configuration. The configuration at the station we're going to set at this time. In station number two, let's add a station to that. So that's an idle now in three. And here, station four, let's add a certain number of stations. Let's add six of them. And that will give us room idles after the coining for trimming. And we can always add more later on if we want. That's the right spot to save in. And, uh, oops, can't type. My goodness. Get my fingers situated. Strip assembly. And the job number or project number. And strip feeding direction. And that project number will get associated it'll get added to everything that goes into this die from this point forward. Really nice feature. Really takes care of file management in a big way. So you can see lots of things are going on on the left side and there our strip assembly is roughed in. Zoom out a little bit. Let's show the configuration name graphically. And let's, I like to, sometimes I use an even number here. Sometimes I don't bother with it, but we'll make that point 0.3. And we get a preview here on the first two stations. So that's what you're going to be seeing changing. I want at least 75 thousands between the parts, but I want an even progression, so I'll make that 625. And you probably wouldn't make it that much in real life. Let's just update that. But we're just showing you for reference how to do it. And now we're going to be independent. The part's not going to be balanced in the middle of the material. I want more material here, 375. It shows our material loss down there. And there's our preview on the width, but here I only want 60 thousandths, like so. But I want an even material width, so I'll make that 1.4, and then that changes that, so I'll make that 375, and that 060 is calculated that's not changeable at this point without changing one of the other ones. And we'll apply that like so. And that's updated in our 20 some stations. And we'll add a cutting punch. We'll start with the pilot pierce punch. I'll select this entity and convert it and then change it to construction geometry so that I can dimension off of it. And I'll draw a construction line about like that and dimension that. and then draw my circle for my pilot pierce. Make it 095, for example. Hit OK, and my punch is created. As far as the shank on the punch or what have you, that gets created later on. This is just piercing the hole in the strip. And we've got a graphical preview of it being pierced at this point. We'll add another punch, and when we select the add a punch, it puts us into a sketch automatically, creates the punch, zooms us normal to, if we were on an angle, 
and let's draw a rectangle. I want the punch that's in here. And we'll go to LogoPress 3 Command Manager, search the punch outline. Very, very slick. Delete those. Drag that over to there. And that one over to there. And OK. And we won't be left with a line there. You might think that, but that's OK to do. See, there's no line. And again, we've got a graphical display of what's getting cut out at this point. And you can see there, it zoomed us normal to, as well as creating the punch, the part file, and putting us into a sketch. Search the punch outline. Drag that over to there. Uh, this is how I like to do this type of punch. Go on an angle like that to find the midpoint of each and then make it vertical. And now that's going to stay balanced as you dimension it. 125. And I'm not going to worry too much about how I'm dimensioning these punches from a style standpoint or what the dimensions are. I'm not going to bother with radii. It's just an example to cut them out. Dimensioning is it's SolidWorks dimensioning. Let's apply those cuts. Again, you can see that they're graphical, the red. And now they're no longer graphical. The cuts have been made in the solids all the way down. There's where the coining starts. Add another cutting punch. And let's draw a rectangle right here. And search the punch outline. And then simply drag that up. It's a good technique. And again, I'm not spending much time, but I'm just I'm dimensioning these just to remind you to make sure that things are always dimensioned. But I'm not too concerned about what the dimensions are or exactly how I'm going to make the punch. I'm more interested in showing you the performance of LogoPress 3. Create another punch, zooms us normal to, puts us into sketch mode. Search the punch outline. Saves a lot of time. Automation is where it's at. Dimension from here. Oops, let me draw a line first and then dimension like so and top to bottom and I'm not putting any punch mismatches on None are really necessary other than in this area right here, perhaps. But we've got some awesome punch mismatch tools. And apply that. And with that, we're ready for video number seven. There's our strip layout roughed in.